we'll proceed with chapter 40, which, which in, in the textbook, which are legal issues, quality assurance, and infection control in dental radiography. The dental assistant must be aware that in every state there are legal responsibilities involved in taking dental radiographs. And every state has different modalities of getting licensure, but there are no states in, the, in America, including the district, where one can take x-rays without being licensed. Our program, both in, in both Maryland and Virginia, uh, prepare you for the Dental Assistant National Board called the DAMBI, which is a comprehensive examination given at the, at the, the conclusion of your x-ray training. And it is a 24-hour program, which is what we provide for all of our students, um, including the reading materials and the textbook of which you're participating at this point. Uh, never take x-rays until you were licensed and certified by the state that you were practicing in. In Maryland, as we said, and in Virginia, the Dental Assistant National Board is the codifying examination test that's preferred. And it is a comprehensive examination useful in upwards to 40 different states, including the District of, of Columbia. So he, never take pictures in anyone's office without your being licensed. The doctor sh should not allow this to happen. And you certainly don't want to expose yourself to criticism and possible legal action by not being licensed before taking pictures. There are three major categories of legal considerations which the dental system should be familiar with. The federal and state regulations regarding x-ray, licensure in the state that you are participating, and risk management for avoiding potential lawsuits. The use of dental x-rays is regulated by both federal and state regulations. The federal, federal regulations supersede those of the states, but every state has its own testing device and its uh, requirements. The Consumer Patient Radiation Health and Safety Act is a federal law that requires persons who take dental x-rays to be properly trained and certified. And every state accepts that under federal mandate, but it has its own individual testing modalities. Risk management policies are designed to reduce the likelihood of a malpractice suit against the dentist. The, dentist, the dental assistant has an important role in this risk management. The assistant must be careful never to say anything negative about the equipment or how it is working. If the equipment is not working properly, x-rays should not be taken with that equipment. Statements made without thinking such as the timer must be off, this thing never works right, or the solutions are weak, covering up a mistake that the assistant may have made are totally inappropriate and unnecessary and can make the patient very uncomfortable, leading to some legal responsibilities down the line. So if there's a problem with the equipment that's legitimate, then don't take the pictures at that, period, that, that point in time. Informed consent. It is the dentist's responsibility to discuss the needs for x-rays and treatment procedures with the patient. However, in almost all cases, the dentist will examine the patient and prescribe the number and types of radiographs that that patient should have to the dental assistant. The dental assistant then participates in the informed consent by explaining to the patient all of the issues that are involved in taking x-rays and informing them, just like the informed consent is used for any medical procedure before a patient is operated on or any procedures are done. Well, taking an x-ray is changing the patient's molecular structure and the patient has every right and responsibility to understand this process completely. The patient must be provided with the following information in lay terms, and that's where the dental assistant is more effective than the dentist himself in explaining this. One, the risk and benefits of the x-rays, the person who will be exposing it, the number and type of x-rays. Now, a full set of periapical x-rays taken on patients is 18 films routinely. 
many patients have no concept when, when the doctor says, let's take a full set of pictures, that this means 18 films. And the patient needs to know that before you proceed. Because the patients may, may, may agree to taking x-rays thinking that a set of pictures was two films, four films, maybe six or seven films, but never usually understanding that that can be 18 films, 18 individual periapical films. So the number of type and the type of radiographs must be explained to the patient. The consequence of, the, of not having the radiographs and any alternative diagnostic aids that may provide the same information as the radiographs. And so the patient has every right and should be explained all of these aspects. And then more importantly, they need to be, they, the dental assistant needs to answer any questions the patient may have. Never, never make a statement or answer a question if you're not completely understanding and, <clears throat> and able to explain this to the patient clearly. Because if you explain to the patient something that's not totally correct, it will come back to the office as being misinformed and can be a very, very serious uh, abrogation of responsibility to, to the office and the doctor. Under state laws, the supervising dentist is legally responsible or liable, <clears throat> but he can defer this information to the dental assistant. This is called respondeat superior doctrine. It means that the employer is responsible for the actions of the employee. However, even though dental assistants work under the supervision of the dentist, they can also be held legally responsible for their own actions. Patient records. It is very important to document the exposure of the dental radiographs in the chart. The number of films that were exposed, as well as the quality of the radiographs, may be an important issue in any malpractice suit. Radiographs that are of poor quality and are non-diagnostic reflect against the dentist and must be retaken. If the, if the x-ray pic picture is diagnostic, which means that there's enough information on the picture that the doctor is, feels comfortable in making his diagnosis and proceeding, then not every film needs to be 100% correct. There are no such things as a 100% perfect picture. However, it must be diagnostic. And any time the doctor has any concern about not seeing information on the film that he's looking for, that film needs to be replaced and, and retaken. The dental record must include the following information. Informed consent, the number and type of x-rays, the rationale for exposing the x-rays and the diagnostic interpretation. So all of these must be placed in the, in the dental chart after the doctor has uh, read the x-rays and informed the patient of his diagnostic uh, materials. Ownership of the x-rays. The radiographs are the property of the dentist. Even though the patient or the patient's insurance paid for it, the x-rays themselves belong to the dental office. They are part of the patient's record and the original x-rays can never be shared with the patient or sent out of the office. And patients have a right to reasonable access of their, their records and most, most, uh, most dental offices will allow the patients to have a copy of the radiographs that they can take, but never the original should be sent should be sent out of the office because that is the official document of the exposure to that patient. Never give the original radiographs to the patient nor send them to another doctor. Always a copy of some form. Today in digital x-ray uh, radi radiography it's much simpler. We can print any number of copies that are just as good a quality as the original because this is all digitally held on the, on the hard, hard drive of the uh, x-ray machine. <clears throat> when patients refuse dental radiographs, each doctor can approach this in a different manner. However, it's the, in most dental offices today, if a patient will not allow you to take appropriate radiographs, the doctor really will be, uh, will, will generally will not want to pay, treat that patient because he's, he's accepting the responsibility for the patient's health 
without having the entire di diagnostic material in front of him. And patients sometimes will want to sign off and say, I understand that you're not responsible, but heaven forbid if there's something that comes up later that's a serious magnification, like an undiagnosed tumor, and there are many dental tumors and cysts, etc., that are not seen until you take an x-ray, the patient will never understand that even though they signed the release, that release is not really valid in the courtrooms. And so in all of our practices in Dental One Associate, uh, we do not accept patients who will not accept the, the radiographic interpretations of the radiographic films that we feel are absolutely of a necessity to make the correct diagnosis and take care of the patient appropriately. <clears throat> patient education. As a dental assistant, you should understand and be sensitive to the patient's concerns and fears. And you need to be able to, ex to explain this all, all through the procedure. The, the dental assistant is often the person that the patient feels most comfortable in sharing the information or their concerns. The assistant can explain to the patient just how important x-rays are in detecting diseases and, pla and planning treatment. Patients can be informed of the federal and state laws that are, are available and attempt to, cons to uh, have the patient understand this and sign off to the legitimacy of taking the appropriate x-rays. Quality assurance is, is very, very important in every aspect of dentistry and particularly in radi radiography. Quality assurance is a way of assur assuring that everything possible is being done to produce the highest quality diagnostic x-ray. It includes both quality control tests that we run. It also includes quality administrative procedures that make sure that all of the maintenance and the uh, record keeping logs are appropriate. Infection control in dental radiography. Dental radiography presents a unique, unique infection control problems because of the potential for operator contamination and cross-contamination to other patients and to other members of the staff. Constant movement by the operator from one place to the other, inside of the operatory, outside of the, into the hallway to push the button, and then if using film going into the uh, dark room, gives multiple opportunities for cross-contamination of infectious material from the patient's uh, intraoral exposure. The x-ray machine, the tube head, etc., all of these should be covered uh, and carefully disinfected. The, pla the use of plastic bagging today on everything that we have in the office is appropriate and is the simplest way to, uh, to eliminate or minimize cross-contamination. Lead aprons must be, should, must be used on every patient in taking radiographs and they need to be wet down, wiped down with a disinfectant after each use. Sometimes people forget about the lead apron and hang them back up without wiping them down. But in the case of taking x-rays, saliva can be ex exuded and the lead apron can easily be contaminated and needs to be wiped down with a disinfectant before using on the next patient. The, the backs and arms of the chair, the dental chair, the headrest and the uh, uh, adjustment controls must also be covered and disinfected. Once the radiographic operatory is set up, the film and film holding should be placed in the appropriate place. The place, the workplace area where the x-ray film and film holding devices are placed also needs to be covered with protective garb and also make sure that everything that's been touched outside of the normal appreciation has been disinfected and effectively decontaminated. Contaminated film packages and the whether it's film or it's the sensor device that we place in digital are a major source of cross-contamination during radiographic procedures. When the packet or the sensor is removed from the patient's mouth it is coated with saliva 
or on occasion even with blood. For this reason, the operator must always wear gloves while handling contaminated film packets. And if the film packet is contaminated, which most likely it would be from saliva, you wipe the saliva from film the film packet using tube or two gauze. Do not attempt to sterilize the package because that will ruin the film with inside, inside or the digital image. Film holding instruments, the XCP, which you'll be exposed to in our dental offices in our training program, all need to be sterilized. These are, are sterilizable and after each use on a patient, we have to have multiple setups for the XCP so that we can put it in the sterilizing you know, um, uh, materials and uh, make it a safe procedure for the patient and the operator. Preparation of the operator. Gloves and protective clothing must be worn while exposing x-rays and handling the contaminated films. <clears throat> because radiographic procedures do not involve the aerosol produced by the dental handpiece, a masking, uh, ma a masking glasses are optional while radiographic films are being made. It is my personal uh, uh, recommendation that you, you protect yourself in every dental procedure by wearing the mask and also wearing the protective garb, whether you're doing x-rays, x-ray procedures, or you're doing operative procedures. You can't be overprotected uh, for your own protection and safety. During exposure, the film holding devices should be transferred from the covered work area to the patient's mouth and then back to the same area. Contaminated instruments should never be placed on uncovered surfaces. <clears throat>